How does a farmer's daughter from Essex go and be an Olympic champion? Um, but finally, it made me realise that I was prepared to, to do those sacrifices in life uh, and prepared to realise that, you know, there were so many elements that were such an important part of getting that peak performance out of myself. Um, it's been wonderful to be able to, to go into companies now and work with the healthy living. Um, and part of what we do is making people realise that, you know, small changes can go a long, long way. I think so many people are, are very, very daunted about it. Uh, they know they want to live healthier lifestyles. Um, and this is what we've really felt over the last couple of years. But they don't know how. And I very much feel it's about helping people, supporting people, and giving people the right tools to make those changes. Um, the days that we go in, and uh, we've worked with many companies now, and, and we do all sorts of different programmes. Firstly, I think it really helps to go in and, um, you know, and to give a bit of a talk, you know, the reasons behind it, and, and make people feel as though you know, they can do it, they are, they are capable of doing it. Um, it's about, like I do with, with so many things, whether that's in the workplace, it's setting them goals. You know, that might be within a group, within a team, within the workplace to have some sort of fitness goal, what they would like to do within it. And it doesn't have to be, you know, so many people think, oh, I've got to go and run a marathon or I've got to go and climb this or whatever it may be. You know, it's finding something that everybody wants to do. And whether that's an introduction to a Pilates class or a certain charity walk or a, a 5K run for charity, whatever it may be, it's really important to, to set those sort of goals and to help them set those goals. Um, another part of the day is that we do a healthy living room, which has been really successful, where we go in and we have all the specialists, nutritionists, uh, we have people looking at posture within the workplace, we have people looking at um, you know, ways of giving up smoking, we have taster sessions on, on yoga and, and Pilates uh, to deal with the stress side of it. We also go in and we have a uh, massage as well, which is always very, very popular, um, you know, whether that's just a shoulder massage within the the chair but having areas as well um, and people within the company just come and they feel as though they can just have a wander maybe it's something that they've never even thought about doing uh, but just having a wander around getting advice um, stretching areas and all those sorts of things really and just giving people that opportunity to be able to try different things and think do you know what I do want to make a changing life you know, I want to go out there. I want to feel good about myself. I want to have more energy. And then it's being given people that the support that they need afterwards. Um, and I very much come along and realise that people want that personal side of it. So it's setting people training programmes, um, having online systems, having all sorts of information, helping them, as I said, to set those goals. But having sort of lots of feedback, giving them tips, giving them motivation, having that personal sort of training programs, whatever it is that they want to achieve out there and feeling very much as though they're, they're getting that one-on-one -on -one sort of help and guidance all the way through. I think as companies and what the companies feel is, you know, a number of areas and um, one in particular, one company that we've worked on for the two years now is they're very much call centre based. Um, and, you know, very difficult to retain that sort of staff and the amount of illnesses they have, uh, that it has really very much helped now. And we've been able to show those sorts of figures to them about, you know, getting people much more motivated if they're doing night shifts and that sort of area. Also within sales staff as well, you know, another company we're working with is, you know, a lot of their sales staffs are all over the place. Um, and what we've done in, in some of their conferences to actually run healthy living, you know, half days almost, where we have the healthy living room, but actually we get them out and we get them out doing walks and bike rides and uh, yoga classes and uh, swimming and all sorts of things and it gets all the sales staff working together that's whole team area as well so for me personally it's very much about you know naturally finding myself in that area realizing as I said people want to make a change you know companies are now I've been working with some of the um, with Norwich Union on, on their health side of it you know they want their their staff to be retained they want their staff to be healthy and there's lots of sort of areas where they can get the you know the cost of um, insurance down and things against companies as well so working with them as well and making sure that you have a healthy workplace to be able to work in as well so thank you very much there's a lot there to take away I know there's some leaflets around if anybody is interested I will be around for a little while um, I don't know if we've got time for a, a few questions I know we've got another couple of 
speakers afterwards. So um, anybody has any questions, but it has been a, a nice honour to be able to chat to you this afternoon. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sally. Uh, I was praying you weren't going to come second in that film. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I promise you, I will not buy the kebab I was planning on the way home. Um, uh, but no, truly inspirational. Uh, a couple of minutes for questions for Sally. Anybody's got... Anyone want any tips? Thing, isn't it? Being the first. Oh, thank yeah. you. I do. I still, I've seen it a few times now. I still get <laughs> goose pimples. I still get the hairs going up on the back of my neck. And I think the best thing is, um, you know, people saying about where they were on that night, so many people remember it. And it's actually hearing their stories. You know, I, uh, I remember someone was telling me that they were stuck in a traffic jam on the M25 and it was standstill. And, all, and the, you could see everybody was listening to it on the radio and then all the horns were bleeping afterwards. And, and you think, my God, that all seems a bit strange, really. But yeah, it is quite weird to, to still watch. And uh, sometimes I do still look and think, is that really me up there? Did I still do that after all these years? So thank you. Hi, Sally. I'm actually a futurist, and one of the reports I read from uh, Mintel was that by 2020, over 50% of the population would be obese, not just overweight. Are we doing enough? And whose responsibility is this obesity problem, really? Yeah, I mean, and it's a, it's a huge worry. Um, you know, it is a combination of both. People are sort of saying, is it just related to the amount of food you're eating and the types of food you're eating? And, and obviously all the sugary adverts that we see and that sign of it. But I still come back to, it, it's about exercise. It's calories that you put in um, and it's calories that we don't put out. And, and a lot of that is to do with the culture that we live in now and, you know, the kids playing on computer games and things like that. And a lot of what I do is, is trying to get kids actually, mm -hmm. trying to get families active um, because I really believe it's a culture change that we've got to stimulate here and it has to be done from a young age. You've got to get kids back out there, getting them active and getting parents realising it's, it's their responsibilities in some ways. Um, but also I think it's, it's making people realise, you know, a bit of what I'm saying, giving people the tools to want to make a change. Everywhere I go, people do want to change. They, they realise it, but it's how. Um, they don't know how, you know, you read all these things and as I said, they think they've got to go to the gym or they've got to go and run a marathon. It's not about that. It's finding what works for you and making it a way of life and that small changes can go a long, long way. Um, and I think we've just got to keep going at it. You know, a lot of it is, I always think, is down to the supermarkets. You know, they've got such responsibilities out there as well. You know, they're a major part out there. So I think it's getting that message across there. But, you know, it's a massive problem uh, and it's a real culture change that we've got to try and keep going away. And I don't think we can really rely on the government as such. I think we, you know, we've got to look at big companies to, to make that difference and, and try and get that message out there as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sally, that was wonderful and I adored watching your film. So this question isn't in any way to detract from your achievement. But one of the things that worries me in our industry, and we heard some of it today, was we're going to have the best workplace. We're going to have the number one workplace. And I wondered, as you were speaking, about whether any of your competitors had uh, motivational coaches who told them for a few years before just to visualize themselves crossing the line. And of course, only one of you could be first. And so my question is, uh, if we're to get away from zero-sum games where we get into a good enough standard for everyone, it doesn't apply specifically in uh, your industry, mm. which is competitive sport, but what resilience did your coach give to you in case you didn't come across mm -hmm. first? What would have been the capacity to deal with the shattered dreams then? Yeah. Um, well, throughout my whole career, really, it was... Um you know, there were setbacks, things went wrong, injuries, um, being told I was the, the wrong colour, the wrong size by one of the top guys in, uh, in British sport, uh, you know, which, which knocked me, but luckily, um, you know, not for long, and I thought, right, I've got to go out there and prove to him, not going to shout about it, but prove to him from the inside that I can do it. Um, so I think it's, 
you know, to get myself where I was at the final performance, I had to go through that. It made me understand who I was as a person. You know, we talk about performance, and often it's, um, it's going through situations and, and finding a positive from it. You know, I had to lose some races where I was favourite by miles and that sort of thing and wanting to walk away from the sport for me to realise that actually I love what I'm doing um, and actually make me realise that, you know, find something positive, put it behind me and be able to go out and, and perform again. But, and I think it's something that, you know, I very much apply to my life now. You know, it's, uh, you know, so many crossovers and I think that's one area. You know, not everything goes your goes your way all the time, but when something comes which, you know, is a bit of a, what I call a step back or a bit of a dent, learn from it. Make sure that it, it doesn't happen again. And, uh, you know, and I do think at the end of the day, it, you, know, you learn from it and you're a better person because you have, have gone through that. Um, I think the mind is a, is a very, very strong tool, and I often say that so much of what it, what it took, but I think the difference between the other athletes is because um, I looked at those other areas you know, how big a difference it, it, you know, I know that some of those guys weren't eating the right food and, and, and I know that, you know, they were very mentally stressed and they weren't dealing with it and I think that's what I had above them at the end of the day because I knew that there was people out there that were stronger than me and there was people out there that were taking all sorts of things because I know that because they've been caught since. Um, so I think what I had above them was all those other little elements that got me into that peak performance to be able to deliver on that day.